most FPV pilots face the same problems, that no matter how much or how little we fly, we can never seem to get enough stick time. So I devised a sneaky plan to getting more stick time. This is a go bag for FPV. Now, if you're not familiar with go bags, they're supposed to be a bag that you just grab when there's an emergency and you grab it and you go and it has everything that you need in the event of that emergency. And we're gonna use this concept to create our very own FPV go bag. One of the challenges is gonna be finding flying spots for a five inch freestyle quad. And here is where my sneaky plan comes into place. We're gonna to need to have a 250 gram freestyle drone that flies just like a five inch, but is small enough to rip practically anywhere. One of the tricks to making sure that this plan doesn't fail is to make that sub 250 gram version of a five inch. This is my quad Mueller Siren F5. So let's shrink this down to the Siren F3. Now it's time to research all of our different parts to make sure that we can hit this 250 gram weight limit. The Quadmula Siren F3 comes in at 54 grams. For motors, the T-Mode at 1604 s which total 47 grams, China Hobbyline 6S 450 milliamp powers for 85 grams, DJI 03 air unit and antenna comes in at 39 grams, Speedy Beat F7 mini stack at 13 grams, and HQ 3 inch props at 5 grams. On paper, we should come in under 249 grams, but it's going to be tight. You could also go for the Walksnail version, which would reduce this down to 247 grams. And if you want to make a 4S alternative, that's completely possible. Now, my build is actually going to be a little over because I already had the Xnova 1804 motors, which come in at 60 grams. But I am waiting on the T-Motor Pacer 1604 motors in 3800 kV. Now that we've got all the parts for the quad, it's time for step three of the sneaky plan, and that's to build out our FPV Go bag. This is the camera bag that came with my backpack, so it should hopefully work as the perfect FPV Go bag. Goggles should be pretty straightforward as well, and that's just putting our FPV goggles into the bag. Now, don't forget your goggle cable as well as a battery for your goggles. I'm going to be using the DJI FPV Remote 2 and I'm going to be making a Walksnail version of this quad as well which I'm going to use with Express LRS and the Jumper T-Lite version 2. Tools are going to be important because you want to make sure that if anything happens in the field you're ready to go and this means you're just going to have to keep the bare essentials like hex drivers, cable tie, electrical tape, snips, spare prop screws, spare props, and a couple of battery straps should be enough to deal with anything that comes your way. Those first four items are the easy ones. This last part of our kit is going to be the most challenging, and that's dealing with batteries. You see, batteries are an issue because we can't just keep them at full charge in our bag the whole time. Otherwise, their health is just going to degrade and the batteries are going to be useless and a waste of money. So we're going to have to get a little creative here. To manage battery health, we're going to just need to have to keep them at storage voltage. But that creates another issue that we're going to need to solve, and that's how do we charge them. Now there's two ways to do this. We can charge it from our car, but what if you don't have a car or you think maybe that's not a good idea like I do? Well that's where two comes in, and that's building a field pack. Except we can't just use any normal field pack. After all, they're going to just be too big and clunky. Luckily for us, 18650 batteries can do the trick. So we're going to need a 6S1P Lion pack or 2P if you want. And you can either buy this or make it yourself. The maths on this works out that if you get a 3,500 mAh 6S Lion pack, you should be able to charge probably around 7 packs from empty to full. With the FPV go bag all ready to go, it's time to take out and fly and just see how many packs I can get in. Alrighty. Now, in terms of the number of packs, I was able to get all four batteries charged at the beginning. I was able to charge two batteries uh, fully and the third battery sort of half. So comfortably six packs. Being able to squeeze in six sneaky packs, which is about half hour worth of flying anyway, is a really cool thing. So even though we might be thinking, oh, let's go out and try and fly the whole day, 
that's not the actual goal. The goal is to try and sneak in a few cheeky packs here and there. So being able to get six packs, which is half hours worth of flying, is really good. In terms of performance, okay, so the motors are probably where I think the biggest issue is. So the X motors are a bit heavier. It just doesn't have that punch out. It's got that weight to be able to sink in and, and flow, but it just doesn't have enough pep. And that's coming back to the 1804 2400KV motors. Now, I use these exact same motors on my 230 and a half inch, and it absolutely flies amazing. And I think the reason for that is the three and a half inch props do produce more thrust and more lift versus these little three inch props. So over the course of the week, I'm actually gonna swap these out. So over the course of the week, I'm actually gonna swap these out to the Pacer 1604 motors in probably trying to get around that 3000 kV. So that's what I'm that's what I'm going to do during the week and that should really fix this quad's ability to fly. Um, I really enjoyed flying it. DJI 03 is the perfect setup. So all the video that you're seeing from the quad's flight is with the DJI 03. It's all on board and that's one of the beautiful things about this. We don't need to carry an action camera. So we're saving 30 grams there, right? Because we're going to have to have a VTX anyway. We may as well get an action camera and have that. Um, if you wanted to fly Express LRS, I'd probably go with an EP2 receiver and stick that in behind the camera, which is probably what I'm going to swap this out to anyway. Flight time was about three and a half to four minutes. So with a higher KV motor, that's going to come down. So it's probably going to be three to three and a half minutes. So six packs, at three, and a, at three to three and a half minutes. You know, we're looking at about 18 minutes to probably 18 to 20 minutes worth of flying, which isn't such a bad thing if you're trying to just sneak in some packs, which is the goal of what we're trying to do. So there are some compromises with this sneaky plan and it's not without its drawbacks. Firstly, there is not ever going to be a three inch or quarter of any size that flies like a five inch it's going to be different. But we can try and get as close as possible, which also means flying in smaller places that we might not usually have been able to. And then there's also the radio. Now the Jumper T-Lite is a great radio, but if your daily driver is something like the Radio Master TX-16S or the Boxer, then the smaller gimbals are going to be an issue from a muscle memory perspective. And of course, you can compensate for this a little bit with longer sticks, as well as different rates, but it is going to give you a different feel. Now, the whole idea of this FPV Go bag came from something I actually used to do when I first started flying in FPV, but I kind of stopped doing it and I actually wish I hadn't. You see, in my previous role at work, I used to be on the road seeing customers all the time and I would take my kit with me each day. But back then, my kit wasn't as full on as it is now. So I'm glad to have built up this FPV Go bag and I'm gonna be keeping it in the car, although even though I'm not out on the road seeing customers. And if you don't wanna do a three inch, that's perfectly okay. Watch this video here to see how I built my perfect five inch freestyle quad. I'm Darren Allett, until next time, don't forget to send it.